Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and we've got a new collab coming our way. So looking at the banners, we have a Dissidia Final Fantasy NT collab coming our way. I opened up the notices this morning and noticed that we really only got the banners for now, but it's probably because the KR21 banner was expiring. So hopefully come Monday, we've got more events. We've got a new raid boss and a new avatar board. So that's my hope for this collab right now, but let's see Monday what they've got in stock for us. But for right now, we've just got the banners, so we're going to go ahead and talk about the banners, the medals, and whether or not I think you should pull for them. So looking at the notice, we've got two new medals coming our way. We've got Kingdom Hearts Cloud Dissidia and then Kingdom Hearts Leon Dissidia. And these things look amazing. It's the Dissidia models with the Kingdom Hearts clothes on top of them. They look pretty sweet. But let's go beyond that, talk about the banners, talk about the medals, and then I'll let you know whether or not I think you should pull for them. So we've got two VIP banners and one free-to-play banner. So there's a lot of differences between these two. So let's go ahead and talk about them. So looking at the VIP banners, you are going to get four Kingdom Hearts 3 medals. And I did take a look in the draw odds. It does show the Dissidia medals as being part of the Kingdom Hearts 3 pull. So one of those four medals, if you're pulling VIP, could be the Dissidia medal. With the VIP banner, you're also getting a trait based on the banner you're pulling from. So if you pull from the Cloud banner, you're going to get a Cloud trait. If you pull from the Leon banner, you get a Leon trait. You also get five general medals. So again, these could be random medals that are from anywhere between a five-star tier three going all the way up to a new Supernova medal. So it's a wide range. So you get five just random additional medals. You get 30 vip coins and remember as of right now vip coins only translate to traits so you're actually getting three more additional traits on top of the one that you're getting from pulling and then you also get three gems based off of which banner you're pulling from so the cloud banner will give you three power gems and the leon banner will give you three magic gems now let's take a look at the free-to-play banner that came with it which is far more underwhelming so in the free-to-play banner, you only get two Kingdom Hearts 3 medals, again, which could be the Dissidia medals, but that's standard stuff that the VIP one gets four, and then the free-to-play one gets uh, two. On top of that, you get eight random medals, so again, they could be as bad as being a bunch of tier three five-star medals, ranging all the way up to being a bunch of supernova medals. So it's a wide range, but you don't gamble on the range. You get one tier nine dual meow, which at this point is kind of a lackluster thing to give. I feel like they should give tier 9 dual meow as and other means that aren't the banners, especially when we're now pulling for tier 10s. So getting tier 9 dual meow as is good because it's guaranteed. It is support if you're like new and you need more supernova plus tier 9s. So it's pretty good that you're getting at least one tier 9 dual meow -ow, and then you get 10 VIP coins. And again, that's equivalent to traits. So you're getting one trait. So let's take a look at the differences, which are really stark, and in my personal opinion, it's almost unfair comparatively. So with a VIP, you're getting four Kingdom Hearts 3 medals, so it's two additional ones, but again, that's, that's old stuff, you know, we've seen that before. But the big difference between VIP and free-to-play, and I think this is a stark, just a crazy difference, is that when you translate the VIP coins into traits, you get four traits with each pull on VIP as opposed to the one trait that you get for the free to play banner and traits are pretty much becoming essential for passing content so whether it's PVP whether it's content like PVE content or if it's raids traits are becoming just so crucial in order to rank well in any of those things in some cases you actually need good traits just to pass the regular content that's available to everyone so to give vip four traits on top of uh like guarantees like the gems you only get one trait as free to play and no gems you get a tier 9 dual meow which is like a pretty sad consolation prize in comparison to getting three additional traits and three additional gems so i don't know it's it's a very very big difference and then actually we'll look into the draw odds later but luckily no matter what whether you do uh the free-to-play banner or the vip banner you're getting one of the medals within 10 draws with the biggest difference being that with vip you get the guaranteed based on which one you pull so if you pull from the cloud banner you get cloud within 10 draws and if you pull from the leon banner you get leon within 10 draws whereas for the vip you get one of the two of them within 10 draws now this is not too bad i hope free to play banners take this direction where you get one of the new 
featured medals within the Mercy. So in past times, we've had those one in three, one in five draws, where one of those medals was the new medal, and then the other two, if it was a one in three, or the other four, if it was a one in five, was just some random medal from the past that was like good at the time, but may not be as good now. So I'm glad that at the very least, the free to play banner gives you a guaranteed one of those two medals within 10 draws. But let's take just a quick sidebar note. So after talking about what makes the VIP one just grossly more unfair than the free to play one, what's up with these 10 mercy draws? So back in the day, even just now with the Ultimate Form Sora and the Pirate Form Sora deal going on, it should be after five draws. I really think that they should go back to five draw mercies. I just don't think it's right to give 10 draw mercies because that's 30,000 jewels just to get one medal. Equivalent in US dollars, that is $300 to get one medal. I even thought a five mercy pull, which is 15,000 jewels for one medal, which is $150, is pretty unfair already. But at the very least, it was a guaranteed five mercy pull, so you can save up for it and then get the medal, like, at least occasionally. You know, like, once every two months, you can at least get one guarantee. But with this 10 mercy draw, I really hope they don't go in this direction. Because no matter what they do, if they give us more ways to get jewels anyways, but they increase the cost of the banners, what was the point, you know? It's, it's kind of like a trick to make it seem like you're getting more jewels and that you're getting more content that gives you jewels, but they're going to increase the cost of the thing that matters the most in this game, which is, like, medals. So... I don't know, I really hope they go back to a format where it's get it within 5 draws, because I think 10 draws is crazy, like back in the day, or even again looking at the Pirate Form Sora or Ultimate Form Sora deal, 10 draws is 2 5 mercy pulls, so you could have been getting like 2 good decent featured medals within the same amount of jewels that it takes you to get 1 guarantee of this. So I'm not a fan of these 10 Mercy draws personally, but that's just a, a sidebar note. I really think they should go back to 5 Mercy pulls. Alright, moving on to the actual uh, rest of the notice. So we've got 10 days to decide whether we want to pull on these. And again, they talk about the VIP coins. So again, these medals just look so, so, so sick. But let's talk about the actual medals themselves now. So, looking at, we'll just use Kingdom Hearts Cloud Dissidia as our example, because they more or less do roughly the same thing, except Cloud is going to be power, and then Leon is going to be magic. So looking at the Cloud one, it hits all targets, deals 3 hits, for 3 attacks only, it buffs power metal strength by 2500, which is the highest strength buffing that we've gotten so far. For one turn, it gives you Upright Strength 15, and then General Strength and Power Strength by 10, and then it decreases all targets defense by General Defense by uh, 5, and Power Defense by 5. So looking at the buffs right here, this is okay. It's alright, because one of the hardest buffs to come by is increasing General Strength and decreasing General Defense. So these medals at least give you 10 General Strength increase and then minus 5 General Defense on the enemies. So it's okay. Again, you still need medals to round out the buffs like Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie A. Um, the medals don't have any sort of decreasing upright debuff, so that's kind of a problem there. Uh, but yeah, just keep that in mind that there's buffs here, but you still need quite a bit of more work in order to round out all the buffs. It gives special attack bonus plus 200%, which is less relevant because tier 9s that are supernova plus are able to give you plus 280% special attack bonus. The damage condition for cloud is going to be the more gauges are full. So that means this metal is going to get harder to use the later it is in your keyblades. So if it's on like the fifth slot, if it's on the pet slot, if it's on the friend slot, it actually gets weaker because if you have to activate gauges, in order to activate metals, then if this is further down the line, odds are by the end of your rotation, you've used quite a few amount of gauges and then this metal just gets weaker. So unless you have a bunch of metals that cost zero gauges or you have like attack boost, max, SP gauge zero on those metals, it's gonna be very, very hard to maintain all your gauges until the very end, meaning that this cloud can be pretty decent early on in the setups or at the very end if you're able to maintain a lot of gauges. And then it has Pierce's Defense Boost 15%, which is the same as Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas. So 15%, we did a comparison between 15% and 30%, and 
and 15% just breaks a lot less frequently, especially when you're only dealing three hits. So the more hits you deal, the more chances you have at hitting that defense break, but with only three hits and a 15% chance, that's pretty low in my opinion. I'd only cost two gauges, and it's got a pretty decent multiplier. We definitely have things that are cracking more than 70 right now, so it's an okay multiplier. In my opinion, it's an okay multiplier. Alright, looking at the supernova attack, it hits only one target, and for two attacks, it increases upright metal strength by 1,000, and then increases your self buffs by uh, pretty much perfect for power with cloud, and then with Leon, it is perfect for magic. And here's the next kicker, and this was part of the stuff that they're advertising, ignores target's defense boost. So no matter what, this supernova attack is going to be breaking through that target's defense and giving you that orange critical damage that you do in PvP with other defense break metals like Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Sora, Kingdom Hearts 3 Zeus, Kingdom Hearts 3 Dark Riku. Uh, triggers before slot 6 is activated when defending in PvP. This is normally good because it usually means after all your buffs have gone off, you're going to be acting the supernova attack. But because the supernova attack pretty much gives it perfect buffs, it doesn't really matter that it activates in uh, slot 6. Now this is the kicker where I think it actually doesn't really matter, is that the supernova attack, while it does break defense boost, it's only times 20. The multiplier is only times 20 when we have tier 9s whose multiplier for the supernova attack is times 200 to 220. So defense boost 5 max decreases an attack's damage down to 10%. Now really, I just think this is like a weird, tricky, gimmicky math test, where the supernova attack for Kingdom Hearts Cloud Dissidia and Leon Dissidia is 20, and it does defense break ignoring, so when you factor in the fact that defense boost 5 max only does 10% damage, but the supernova attack of these metals is only 10% of what a regular supernova is. It's like the same amount, mathematically, right? Because it's a times 20 multiplier that is ignoring a 10% damage from defense boost. So it's still just 200%, right? And it's actually worse because this supernova attack, number one, doesn't give you any special attack bonus down the line, so you're not getting the additional 280% bonus that you'd get from a tier 9 supernova attack. And then in content, in things where you're fighting PvE, where you're fighting just Heartless instead of actual players in PvP, it's only got a 20 multiplier. Because enemies like Heartless don't have any defense boosts, so it's only a 20 multiplier that gives you no additional special attack bonus for your, the rest of your medals. So really, the supernova attack is bad, and it only activates for two attacks. Like, that upright metal strength plus a thousand is only relevant for two attacks. So, all in all, I actually think this is like a bad metal. Um, not only that, I actually didn't mention this or I didn't emphasize it enough. For the power metal strength plus 2500 for Cloud or the magic strength plus 2500 for Leon, it's only three attacks. And that's really, really bad. We have metals that give you metal strength for the entire Keyblade. And then these only do it for three attacks. Not only that, but only doing it for three attacks means that you can't use it with recovery buffing. So remember that recovery buffing, you get knocked out in the middle of your turn. So that way you come back with all your buffs and you're still able to maintain things like strength buffs. You're maintaining all your strength, like general strength buffs, your multiplier buffs. And then the enemy maintains all of their defense debuffs. But since this metal only hits for three attacks when it comes for the uh, power metal strength plus 2500 or magic metal strength, it doesn't work with recovery buffing. So let's just say you use this metal, which does actually affect count, so it does three hits. And then after you use this metal, you get knocked out. You only get that power metal strength plus 2500 for two more attacks. So odds are if you get knocked out, those first two metals anyways are probably going to be your buffers. So... I don't know, it's it's not a good metal in my opinion. I really don't think these are fantastic metals. It's going to be more or less the same for Leon, except for Leon, it's going to do 4 hits, so that's more of a chance to hit those defense boost breaks. And then it does uh, damage plus the higher slot number. So Leon actually gets better the later he is on the Keyblade in comparison to Cloud. But the Supernova attack is more or less the same, except Leon does magic, 
power uh, cloud is power, but the multipliers are the same. So it's still only going to be that times 20 multiplier for the supernova attack. So I really don't think these metals are good. Like, whether it's PvE or PvP, I don't think these metals are good. Just a personal opinion, and you could let me know in the comments below what you think, but I really think for a collab, they should have made better metals. Like, a lot of these metals, a lot of things about these Dissidia metals are just gimmicky. But they're not sustainable. Like, you can't use them for a long amount of time. Because that, that strength buff only being for three attacks is just really, really bad. Especially when you have things like Ultimate Form Sora, which is an amazing metal that gives you plus 1,500 for the turn. If you get extra attack on Ultimate Form Sora, that's plus 3,000 for the turn. If you get extra attack on these guys, it's only going to be 5,000 for, like, one attack. Because think about it this way. You activate the metal, and that's plus 2,500. You get the extra attack, which is the second of those three attacks, and that's 5,000. But unless you have, like, extra attack 120%, that extra attack is already at 40% the amount of damage as the first one. So even though it kind of self-buffs itself for that second attack, it's lower. The, the strength is lower because extra attack 40% gives you only 40% of the damage output. And then you really only get one additional metal attack that's going to benefit from that plus 5,000 metal strength. As opposed to something like Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie B that gives you plus 5,000 upright metal strength for the turn. And it can be used with recovery buffing. So there's a lot of flaws with these metals that I think that just don't make them good. So all in all, low number of hits with a low defense break means that you're not going to be proccing that defense break as much. Uh, three attacks is only going to get that metal strength, so you can't use it with recovery buffing very well. And it's only three attacks as opposed to other things we have right now that give you plus X amount of power for the turn. And the buffs aren't really good. The damage, mul the damage conditions are really bad, so more gauges are full is not very good, and then higher slot number is okay, because at the very least you can consistently put it in a higher slot number, but if you don't have, like, upright blue in your later slot numbers, you you're forced to put on the pet trait, or on the pet metal slot, so, I don't know. I don't think those are good, either, for the, uh, the metals, and then the supernova attacks, as I've just described, are really, really bad, because the, uh, upright metal strength is only for two attacks, the buffs are only for two attacks. Sure, it ignores target's defense boost, but with a 20 multiplier, it rounds out to pretty much being a 200 multiplier anyways. And it doesn't give you plus 280% special attack bonus for the rest of your medals. There's a lot of bad things about these medals. Like, or at the very least, there's a lot of things that these medals have that don't replace what we already have. So I was like, okay, these medals are bad. But, let's take a look at the draw odds, because maybe that'll make it better. So, looking at the VIP draw odds, going to the uh, general 7-star medals that you can get. So, there's roughly a little bit higher than 0.5% uh, chance that you'll get Kingdom Hearts Cloud City or Kingdom Hearts Leon City early. So, when you crunch out the math, that's like, one every 200 players is going to get one of these two medals. No guarantee which one it is, but they're going to get it early. So that's like an okay amount of chance considering how many players are here. But when you think about it, and if you saw my Ava polls, I got no additional foretellers along the way, and I think there was like a higher percent chance that you could have run into an additional foreteller down the way. So yeah, these draw odds are actually pretty bad. And then when you go to the free-to-play one, it's actually lower. So it's actually like a 0.3% chance that you'll get one of these early. So that's already bad, and then you have to 10 mercy pull them, so that's already bad, the medals are bad, so really, it's a skip for me. Like, this is definitely a skippable banner. Unless you get caught by the aesthetics and you just really, really want the medals, I don't think these medals will work well in PvP, in uh, PvE, in raids, really. Like, yeah, the fact that they're the first tier 10s with defense break is nice. But I mean, when that defense break is going to be hitting so infrequently because you have a low number of hits with a low defense break, it's like, yikes. So, um, personally, I am not a fan of any of these Dissidia medals. I hope that they get better content, at least on Monday, with like a new raid boss and things like that. Something that everyone can enjoy. But these banners are most likely 
because I don't say always because there could be something that comes up they are most likely gonna be a skip for me but with that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if there are any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer when I have the time. But as always, everyone, until next time, take it easy.